Hey, I'm that nerd girl D and welcome back to another craptastic video. This is part two of killer dolls. First up we have 1999's blood dolls. Now this, this movie is campy and cheesy, but I kind of like it. It's different. Virgil Travis is a wealthy psychopath who lives in seclusion with his butler, murderous dolls, and a clown who's a henchman. He kidnapped the female rock band that he keeps in his basement and forces them to play for him. If they don't, they get tortured. Now Virgil likes to mess around with the occult because he's super weird. And he created a little killer doll trio named Pimp, Slideshow, and Mr. Fortune. Now these little, little mini henchman dolls kill everyone that has ever wronged Virgil. And a lot of people have because he's weird. So Virgil has these three little dolls that he uses to murder people who have wronged him. Their names are Pimp, Sideshow, and Mr. Fortune. And these little things just go around wreaking mayhem. This movie also has two endings. So one alternate and one that was originally aired. In one ending, you see Virgil finding someone who's just as evil as he is and they fall in love. And she's evil and likes to commit murder too. In the other one, the woman tricks him thinking that he loves her, that she loves him. But she's really freaked out by this little super itty bitty deformed head. And also, Mr. Fortune ends up letting go the rock band. You pick which ending you like better. Moving on. 1992's Demonic Toys is a direct-to-video horror comedy. The film centers around a police detective being terrorized by demonic toys after a botched arrest. So a police detective is taking out a toy factory and they're trying to capture two guns dealers, Lincoln and Hess. The partner gets killed and the female cop witnesses the security guard get killed and there's this seance which resurrects a demon. Now this movie is crazy. There's a killer baby doll named Baby Oopsie. Him? I can walk, I can talk, I can even shit my pants. <gasps> can you shit your pants? There's a killer jack-in-the-box and just pretty much demonic toys all over the place, hence why it's called demonic toys. So the demon wants this female cop so that it can get her pregnant and resurrect itself. So there's like a little demon baby that's born. So eventually, of course, this demon gets killed and the lady gets to go free. But this is like complete balls-to-the-wall craziness. And also, this movie has spawned several sequels including a crossover with the Puppet Master movie. So check it out if you want to see some, some crazy shit happen. 1989's Puppet Master was a smash hit and had about a dozen sequels. It even teamed up with our previous film, Demonic Toys, in a film called Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys. But the star of the show was not its Puppet Master, but a character called Blade. Blade was a puppet that wields a hook and a blade and was very skilled at killing. So the movie starts off in 1939 in Bodega Bay with Andre Towlin, who is the puppet master and the creator of all these little demonic toys. <laughs> Get it? Demonic toys, even though that's just a play into the previous film, even though this is about puppets. So Towlin is an ex Nazi spy. And so some of the Nazi spies come back to get him. And he hides his puppets and all of his creation materials in a wall in this hotel. Then we go, we kind of fast flash forward to 1989, where a group of scientists, well, they're psychics and scientists, and they're looking for his puppets and his spell books and all that stuff so that they can recreate animating human bodies and stuff like the puppet master was, was, used to be able to do. So he would be able to put souls into puppets. All of this goes wrong when they find these puppets and the puppets have a will of their own and they start killing everyone and everything goes down. Well, the puppets ultimately win and there's a twist in the movie, but I'm not going to give it away because I want you to go watch it because it actually is worth watching. And also, if you want to, go ahead and watch all the sequels because this is a cult classic. And that's all I got for you on this one. <laughs> Let's move on to the next. We move on to the next movie, which is called Tales from the Hood, created in 1995. Tales from the Hood is a 
comedy horror anthology film. And I actually really, really like it, even though it's low budget. I won't be talking about the entire anthology series, maybe in another video, but we're going to talk about the segment called KKK Come Uppins. And this is about Duke Medgar, who is a former Ku Klux Klan member, and he buys a plantation that his family once owned, and he makes that the base of operations for his senatorial race. And a lot of the people don't want him to do it. They want him to respect the plantation. However, he don't give a shit. And he makes his plantation there as he runs for, for senator. He's the current governor. So all these creepy things start happening to him. And the house once belonged to, it got left to the souls of the slaves that died there. And there's an old voodoo lady who took this, took the souls of all the slaves that died on the plantation and put them into little voodoo dolls. Now, when slavery ended, the family member of the senator didn't want to let his slaves go, so he went on a massacre and killed everyone. The lady, the old lady, then put the souls into dolls. The dolls do her bidding, and they're all like, if you look in the house, there's a painting of an old woman sitting in a wheelchair with all these little little dolls surrounded, you know, surrounding her. And he, the um, Medgar looks up at the seal at the ceiling, and he sees the dolls. And one of the dolls is missing, and that doll has come to life, and it's stalking him, making him paranoid, and it kills his um his aide, the guy who's helping him run. So the man confronts the little doll, and he's telling him he's saying some really racist stuff. By the way, little black ass come from? Huh? You think you and some old voodoo bitch could scare me out of my house? The doll brings all his little friends to life and they all dogpile the senator and kill him. And it's kind of like a lesson, like leave the souls alone. Especially if you know a place is haunted, don't try to test it and just move on. But I really like this movie. And let's move on to the next. <laughs> we move on to the next doll, the most iconic of them all, Chucky, which started from 1988's Child's Play movie. Chucky was a psychotic killer who understood voodoo. And this one, I'm going to take a little bit more time to talk about because there's so much. So this movie has spawned eight sequels, a television show, comic books, a coloring book, and a plethora of other things. I don't even want to get into that. But Chucky is definitely my favorite. We already know the story of Chucky and his obsession with Andy. In the very first movie, Child's Play, Chucky tried to transfer his soul into Andy after transferring his soul into the good guy doll. We're not going to go over the movies and what they are, but what I will go into are the many controversies associated with Chucky. And, just, and you'll see just how iconic this movie really has become. In December of 1992, six people tortured and killed a 16-year-old girl named Suzanne Caper. For five days, Caper was subjected to a series of violent acts, increasing in severity and brutality as time passed. She was regularly beaten and injected with amphetamines, forced to listen to rave music, and a song in particular that she was forced to listen to was Hi. However, the worst controversy was Elena Lavovochiva, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but Elena was a Russian serial killer who terrorized the streets of Moscow in 2015. And she reportedly was obsessed with the movie Bride of Chucky. She said that she was influenced to be like Tiffany, you know, Chucky's bride. And she just killed a lot of people with her group. And they called themselves the Cleaners. And they're just a serial killing band. Well, not a musical band, band as in a group of people. <laughs> Sorry. So we all know that Chucky was a serial killer who went on to have a serial killing family with his girlfriend, Tiffany Valentine, and his two kids, Glenn and Galinda, who are non-binary. So that's if you're watching the TV show. And if you are watching the TV show, it's good, isn't it? And if you're not, definitely check it out. <laughs> I'm out. 